Hi everybody, it's been a long time since I did one of these things and I don't expect anybody to watch this live because I didn't announce it ahead of time and it's 8.30 or so on a Friday night so hopefully you're all out doing fun things. Uh, but I'm going to cook uh, some, some dinner tonight and I thought I would broadcast. So I'm guessing most of you are going to watch this uh, after the fact uh, and I know how people watch videos these days, you're going to skip through uh, and just see a couple of important points. That's great. Um, what we're going to make tonight is a recipe that uh, was really brought on by the pandemic. Uh, so I love Chinese food. Uh, and with the pandemic, the Chinese restaurant that I uh, went to all the time closed down. Uh, and even still, ordering Chinese food out for me uh, just isn't a good thing. Uh, I don't like once they put it in the little white box. Uh, it gets mushy and gross, and, and I just don't care for it. So tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a very traditional uh, chicken and vegetables uh, and a brown sauce. And the vegetable we're gonna use tonight is this baby bok choy. Um, but you could use whatever vegetable you like best. So uh, if green beans is more your style, I've done that with green beans, but you could also do uh, broccoli, um, really any, any sort of vegetable that's got a little bit of bite to it and isn't gonna turn to total mush um, is gonna work. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and since I haven't done this in a while, I'm probably going to be just a little bit off my game, but I think I have most of what I need out. So to give you a rundown, we're going to start by preparing the bok choy. Um, I've got some rice going on the stove. Uh, then we're going to fry some chicken. Then we're going to make a traditional uh, Chinese brown gravy. Uh, and then we're going to fry it all up and the thing I have over there looks kind of like a walk. I don't have a walk anymore. So um, that's what we're going to do. So let's start with this uh, this baby bok choy. So I, I've made this a few times. Uh, probably made this recipe like, I don't know, six, seven times during the pandemic. And I finally came up with a method I like. So this bok choy has been rinsed, but bok choy is, is filthy. So even though it's been rinsed, it's going to need to be cleaned a lot more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut make a cut right here where the leaves are. So I've just cut off the leaves and in my bowl they go. And I'm just gonna repeat this. So like even here, even though it's rinsed, there's a giant, I don't know what that is. I'm not worried about the leaves so much as I am the grit that gets down deeper into them. And I'll show you that in just a second. But we're just gonna cut off the leaves because you can eat both the stem and the leaf of a bok choy, but the, the stems uh, obviously are much firmer. And if we cook the, the leaves and the stem together, the leaves just turn to total mush. So uh, what I like to do at this point, I do like to cut off, you don't, some people just eat the whole thing. I like to cut off just a little bit of the stem because you can see it gets sort of brown and nubby. So I just cut off just a little bit of the stem, not a ton, not that much. Um, I'm going to do that on all four of them. This, uh, and see here, you can tell that there's, that's just, that's earth, right? Nothing bad about that. That's great, but you don't want to, don't want to eat it. Um, all four stems, just give them a tiny little trim and there we go. So I'm going to, I'm now going to quarter these. So one cut two cuts and this is what it looks like on the inside once it's quartered and that's a that's a piece that you can just you know that's a big bite but you can do that if if you don't like that if that is too much for you just have cut these in half but know that all these top pieces are going to come apart so you're not going to be able to to do it quite the same um, so here we go quartering quartering And I know I've got a couple of people live. Uh, thank you for showing up. Um, feel free to say hi, though I can't, my vision is terrible. I can't probably read that far away. Uh, or if you're watching this, um, if you're watching this later as a recording, um, please, you know, uh, leave a comment, let me know any thoughts you have, questions, or just say hi there. Okay, so we've got these all chopped up. And we're going to give them a good 
rinse. So I've got uh, just a little colander here and we're gonna rinse them over twice because there really is just a lot of dirt in these guys. So rinse them good. You know, you'll know if you didn't do a good job because when you go to try to eat them, that you'll get a little gritty bite here and there. That's that's fine unless you're like really, really worried about things. You'll be okay. We all live through COVID. You can live through a little bit of dirt on a vegetable, but I'd rather not have gritty bites if I can help it. So I just rinse those and we'll give them a second. And I'm just gonna put um, just gonna put about an inch of water into this pot. Maybe not even. I usually use a smaller pot, but it's where my rice is right now. And we're gonna bring this water to a boil. And we're just gonna steam this bok choy. And it really only needs maybe, I don't know, four or five minutes um, to uh, to get steamed enough. And then we'll just leave it over the warm water. It can sit there for a while while we do all the rest of the work. So I'm rinsing them again. I gave that water a chance to kind of get off there. And now we're gonna hit them one more time just to really make sure that's clean. And that's good. And so again, because I'm using a metal colander, this just goes straight over my pot of water. I don't have to do anything else. Um, and I'm gonna listen, right? One of the best, most important chef skills is just using your ears. You can tell when something's too hot, not hot enough, when it's boiling, when it needs to boil. So, I mean, I, I'll, I'll hear the second that starts boiling and then I'll start paying a little bit more attention for, for four minutes. Um, so that's gonna go, but I am gonna throw just a little bit of salt on there. Normally my salt's on the other side of the kitchen. So just salt those guys up. Uh, this, one of the things that's interesting about this uh, whole recipe is we're not gonna use any black pepper. Uh, this is, a Chinese recipe and so we're going to use Sichuan pepper instead of black pepper and we're only going to use it in our aromatics which we're going to uh, prepare right after we do our chicken kind of no nope, we'll do it we'll do it that way we'll do it that way let's get the chicken going because the chicken's got a lot of work to do so this is about a pound of chicken thigh uh, which I've cut up into bite-sized pieces uh, I'm not going to need my knife for this and I'm gonna fry them in about a half a cup. This is just a, um, a neutral oil. Canola oil is my preferred oil, uh, but you can fry them in you know, vegetable oil. Don't use olive oil though, that's not your friend. Um, so just a half a cup of oil in there. And we're gonna turn this onto a medium heat. You want it hot enough that they sizzle. This is another one of those moments where sound is gonna play into it. So you want it hot enough that they sizzle uh, but not too hot to burn, right? That's where you're looking for. So I'm over sort of a medium heat. And to get these, to get these guys to have a nice crisp exterior, this is, again, we're diverting from a, a more traditional American approach, which might use, you know, a batter, right? If you're used to American fried chicken, um, we're going to use three tablespoons of cornstarch. So this is just three tablespoons of cornstarch. A little bit of salt, and we're just going to toss these in the cornstarch until they're all... Now, you don't want it to be heavy, so if, if for some reason you're finding that you've got, like, thick amounts of cornstarch, but you shouldn't. I've never had that problem. Um, but you want to make sure, like, every little piece is covered. So I cut these up ahead of time, but if you're finding that they're sticking together, make sure you pull them apart. Get all of them covered in cornstarch as best you can. Keep tossing them until they are. So again, hi to the small number of people that are with us tonight. And again, hi to those who might watch live later. Um, again, we're making uh, Chinese chicken, uh, which just is a chicken in a traditional Chinese style ground gravy, which I'll show you how to make. You can adapt this dish to, uh, to pork as well. I haven't tried it with beef, but I can imagine you could do it with beef too. Um, oh, and see, I just heard 
Uh, I just heard my water boiling back there for the uh, for the bok choy. So I'm going to take a peek. We're at 10 minutes in and in probably about four or five minutes, I will just turn that off. I'll give them a peek and a toss every so often, but make sure they're they're good. You know, bok choy is perfectly good raw too. So, you know, um, it's not not a super important thing to get that uh, to get that overcooked. You you don't want it to be mushy. Okay, so that chicken is nicely dusted in cornstarch. All that the whole three tablespoons of cornstarch I put there is now gone. It's on the chicken. Um, I mean, they're not white or anything. They started out, they looked like they would be. But now, as you can see, uh, they're just kind of lightly dusted in that. And we're going to put them in this oil once I think it's hot enough, uh, which is probably not too, too long. We're going to fry them in batches. Ooh, <laughs> the, uh, the camera really uh, zoomed in on me when I turned around. Uh, we're going to fry them in batches because you want to make sure they get crispy. If you tried to put the whole thing in at once, they wouldn't get crispy. Uh, so we're probably going to just do two batches. To me, that's more than enough. I have a very big pot here. If you had a smaller pot, um, you know, you, you might need to do more batches. You know, if you're using something more this size, you need to do more batches. But, you know, something big like this or this, two batches is probably plenty. And we're just waiting until that gets hot enough. I'll turn on the light back here. And for those of you who have watched multiple episodes of my cooking, you know that my fire alarm here is very sensitive, but that the uh, fan over my stove is as loud as a jet engine. So it's a little bit of balance. I hate for the sound to have that on, but uh, if I don't, we won't uh, we won't make it out of here without a fire alarm going on. Okay, so I'll put half of it in there. And the key is you just want, wow, it likes to zoom in when I turn around. The key is you just want one layer of chicken. So that's how you know how many batches you need. You don't want it to be too, too crowded, but I mean, it can be close. Uh, it's, it's forgiving. Um, and, uh, but you just want one layer of chicken there. You don't want, uh, you don't want them sitting on top of each other. They'll never fry. Uh, I am just drinking seltzer tonight. Not going to make a cocktail. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to prep the aromatics. Um, when, we, when we assemble all of this, what happens is we fry the aromatics. Uh, then we add in the stems of the bok choy. Then we add in our gravy. Uh, then we add in our chicken. Then we add in our bok choy leaves last so that they barely get any uh, cooking. Now, normally, uh, yeah, again, again, by here, I can tell that's a little too high. I'm going to turn that down. Uh, normally, I would use like three or four scallions. These are from my farm share. These are the smallest. I don't even know if you can see that on camera because it's so small. Way in. That is the smallest scallion I have ever seen. Just a teeny tiny little scallion. And this is the biggest one of the bunch. And that's not much bigger. So I've got like a bunch here. Uh, and I barely have any white points white parts, excuse me, um, but oh well. Uh, and so we're going to cut them a little bigger than I normally would. Normally I'd just like give them, you know, six or seven cuts, but I'm just going to give these guys kind of, uh, I probably cut off, I'm going to cut off the white parts just sort of on their own, let those be a piece, and a little bit bigger cut for the medium parts, and then I'm just cutting those big enough that they'll go in. So there we go. Scallions. And again, that's a lot more scallions than I would normally use, but I they would normally be a lot thicker. So it's been four and a half minutes since uh, I first heard the, um, the bok choy go in, so I'm going to take a peek at that. I'm going to get a different tongs out because I don't want to put a wet tong down in my...
ton of my hot oil. They're looking pretty good. They could probably take just another minute or so. And my chicken, it's frying up crisp. I'm going to give it a little stir. It's going to sizzle and burn me. And It's good, exciting TV. You can watch me try to avoid grease splatters. That's looking pretty good. Got grease splattered all over my arm. Um, so let's continue with our aromatics. So here, this is our, uh, our scallions. We're also going to do garlic. I normally do a couple of garlic cloves, but again, from the same farm that makes a scallion this big, I got this bulb of garlic that was only, it was like a whole bulb of garlic and it only had four cloves on the whole garlic. So they were gigantic. So I'm just gonna do one because it's just giganto garlic. And if you watched me in the past, I usually use jarred, already chopped up garlic, but this recipe has really got me using more fresh garlic, which I still, like my hands are sticky right now because of it. Drives me nuts. But you do need, you do need a big old piece of garlic or a couple of big old pieces of garlic for this, not, uh, not already chopped stuff. So I'm just gonna cut off that. And we're not gonna chop this uh, we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna slice it. That's all we're gonna do. So slice, 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 slice. Okay, there we go. So we've got some sliced garlic. We just drop that right in on top of our scallion. And then the next one we got is ginger. Now this one's actually the fun one to do. What I like to do is to get myself a nice meat tenderizer. I'll show you how to do that right after I check my trick. So this chicken looks good. I'm pulling it out. It's chicken thigh, so again, we don't use breast. There's very few places where chicken breast will get used here. Put in the rest of my chicken. And I'm actually on like medium low heat at this point because I'm just I was getting so fired up, but turn it back up just a hair. Um, so it's hard to say. So th there's very few times when I'll use chicken breast. Uh, the only time I really find chicken breast uh, good is when I'm just making like a, a grilled chicken sandwich or something where I'm just going to cook it really deliberately, really quickly and make sure I don't overcook it for anything that's Mexican, anything that's Chinese, anything that's, you know, a pasta or a salad. Sometimes I do grilled chicken on a salad with chicken breast. Anything like that, I almost always use chicken thigh. They're just far more forgiving. They actually have a little bit more flavor. Um, and it's, uh, it's my preferred. So as my new apron, and as you know, I used to have a brown one. It's my new one. It's just still getting used to the, uh, to the wear of it. So I've turned off my bok choy, but I'm just leaving it there. It's fine. It's not going to overcook, so it's just going to sit there. I've got my second batch of chicken going. Here's what my first batch of chicken looks like fresh out of the fry. So you see it's got this nice brown crispiness to it. And we cooked it for, oh, I don't know, about, let's see what it says, about eight minutes, seven, eight minutes. Uh, we'll do the same on the other, on the other batch. 
And we're going to go back to our aromatics now. So I just said we've got this nice piece of ginger. That's that big. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the tenderizing side of a meat mallet, and we're going to beat it up. Not a ton. That was three hits. I'm going to flip it over. That's three more hits. And maybe just one more on that side. And that's good. And then I'm just going to take my knife and chop it up. And you want this pretty small, not like tiny, tiny, but you want it small enough. It's going to fall apart a little bit because you beat it up. But you want it small enough that you don't get just like some gigantic bite of ginger. Like you think you're going to bite into a, to a piece of chicken and you end up biting into some ginger. That's... Well, I don't mind it, but depending on your guests, they might not like it. So that's that's our ginger. So right now, to recap, we've got scallions, uh, garlic, and ginger all in this. I'm done with that guy. Next, I'm going to add Szechuan peppercorn, and I've already um, I've already ground them up a little bit. You can do that in a mortar and pestle. I know that everything's backwards on this screen. I got these in Portland, Maine. Uh, from just a, a, a very cute little spice shop uh, right on 4th Street in Portland, Maine. Uh, and it's probably too expensive, but I needed some Szechuan peppercorn. And I've just crushed them up. I actually crushed them with the flat side of the meat mallet. But if you've got a mortar and pestle, that works too. I'm going to drop those in with my aromatics, and that's done. And then the last part of the equation is these Thai chilies. And I use dry Thai chilies. Uh, I like four. Uh, four is really spicy, um, so depending on who I make this for, I might make more or less. The last time I did, I used two, and it actually turned out really well. And all I do is I sort of rip them into thirds. I'm listening to the chickens, making lots of noise. So here we go. Most were skinny, so I might just switch for a part of one. There we go. So that's like two and a half there. Again, if you if you really like spice, you know, toss more in. I think four is pretty spicy, but you know, if you really, really, really like spice, you can go heavier. Uh, I think that I think two and a half is spicy. So if you don't like spice at all, don't put them in there, or maybe just put one or a half of one. They do give flavor to it, but it's a different type of spice than your normal uh, wet peppers. So just be aware. I don't want to deal with that right now. It's too, uh, it's going too hard. It's going to burn my arm again. Okay, so the next thing, and really the last step of cooking, um, well, the, the last step of prepping anyway, is to make our Chinese brown gravy. So our Chinese brown gravy starts with a tablespoon of cornstarch, the same cornstarch that we use on the chicken, a uh, tablespoon of cornstarch. To that, we're going to add a teaspoon of just simple white sugar. So that's just simple white sugar, teaspoon of that. Now we're gonna add a tablespoon of oyster sauce and two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm gonna do the soy sauce first. So here we go. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. And this is why this dish doesn't really need I put a little bit of salt on that bok choy and a little bit of salt on the chicken. But beyond that, you, you're going to be plenty salty without any more salt um, because the soy sauce, obviously, is very salty. Oyster sauce, I took this out of the fridge a little bit before we got on. But this is like when I was a kid, I would go to Steak and Shake with my grandma. Oh, this actually is rolling today. I would go to Steak and Shake with my grandmother and they had... Heinz ketchup bottles that looks kind of like this. And, oh, trying to get the ketchup out of those old glass Heinz ketchup bottles was the hardest thing in the world. And sometimes the oyster sauce is the same. If it is, I just use a chopstick. A knife won't even fit down in there. My, my grandmother, my nanny, used to stick a knife down in there to get the, the ketchup going. And I did that the first time I bought oyster sauce, and I couldn't get a knife. My knife wouldn't fit in there. So thankfully, we're making Chinese food. I just use the chopstick, stir it up a little, and we'll get it out. Having it out of the fridge for a half hour before you use it helps too. So. 
We'll get that back in the fridge soon because it should be refrigerated. And the last thing we're going to add to our brown gravy is five tablespoons of water. If, if, if you, uh, if you rinse the leaves now rather than before, uh, like I did, I've lost count. I hope I'm doing five. Um, somebody will watch this tape and go, he put six in. Um, if you if you wash the leaves beforehand, ooh, let's check. chicken so we didn't burn it thank goodness but whenever i start talking to you uh i i screw up so i'm a much better chef when i'm not talking to anyone i don't know how real tv chefs do it i do they have like a whole crew um but and they actually don't cook live this is live cooking i'm i'm really making what i'm really going to eat tonight so uh, so anyway, so I started to say, if you wash these leaves, like right now, before you're going to put them in, they're going to have a whole bunch of water on them. I mean, you can try to dry them really, really well, or they can have a whole bunch of water on them. And you don't want that. You don't want a whole bunch of water on them. If that's the case, if you can't get them dry enough, go with one less tablespoon of water. So I hope we did five. Maybe I did six. I lost count, as I said. Um, but if, if you do five, then do four, right? So only if they're wet, as long as they're dry like mine are right now, uh, five is going to be uh, five is going to be the right number. The first time I made with bok choy, my bok choy was so wet, I had um, instead of steaming it and keeping my leaves dry, I had boiled it ahead of time and taken it out and let it sit. But there was just still so much water in it that when I tried to cook it, my brown gravy just fell apart. So that's why I say, you know, don't. Uh, You want it nice and dry. So here's our steamed uh, bok choy stems, which I'm just going to put over the leaves. And that's done. And that makes this done. And so now, uh, now we're more or less ready. Uh, just got to wait for that chicken to finish up, which I would have timed that perfectly had uh, I not forgotten completely about it because I was talking to you. Uh, so I'm going to put the oyster sauce back in the fridge. It's been out long enough for my taste. And here I am back again. Um, put that over there. So again, uh, for those who are joining late. Uh, this is uh, chicken, Chinese chicken, and a traditional Chinese brown gravy uh, with bok choy. Um, and we're gonna actually, even though I put this all in together, we're gonna put the bok choy in uh, the pan a little bit separately. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, I've got some rice going. Uh, I rubbed my nose after I touched those chili peppers, so my nose is on fire right now. Even though they're dry chili peppers, they'll still burn you. And my chicken sounds like it is done. So I'm going to turn off that heat. I'm actually going to get a paper towel and wipe down a little bit of my stove. And the grease splatters from here all the way to here. Let's get this chicken out of here. So you can see I got this it's even, come on, it's even a little bit crispier. That's fine. Okay, I'm not worried about it. Um, just 
couple of these pieces apart. They're going to cook together. So when I toss it in the gravy, nice. There we go. Got a couple of little, little brownish parts on a couple of them. That's about it. Otherwise, it's good. Yeah. This one, this one got a little black. Let's see. Hmm. It's fine. Okay. So what we're gonna do. It's time to fry. I'm gonna get a paper towel and uh, wipe that out. See, just I can't tell if that's grease or water, but I don't want any water in there when I start frying. There you go. And what I normally do, and hopefully I didn't fry that second batch so long that I lost it. What I normally do is I just grab. I grab a couple of spoonfuls of oil that I just fried my chicken. And there we go, that was, that's probably about two tablespoons worth in the end. Okay. Everything's gonna go pretty fast right now and uh, we're gonna be done and then I'm gonna say goodbye. So we're gonna do aromatics first. We're going to add in our uh, stalks from our bok choy, then our gravy, then our chicken, then our leaves. You're not going to see all of this, unfortunately, because, again, I don't have a giant crew of people who are uh, filming me. Someday I might. Who knows? Probably never. But that's okay. No desire to be famous. Really just want people to eat well. Okay, so here go my aromatics. And I've got this on high heat now. I do want it on high heat. So my aromatics are going right here in the oil. This is probably going to take just a couple of minutes. It's not, didn't heat up quite as much. You'll, you're going to do this for a minute or two, and you'll know you're close to done when you can really start to smell the garlic and the ginger. If you're not smelling the garlic and the ginger, uh, then you just haven't gone long enough. If you ever go into, people come into my house all the time, and they go, oh, it smells great. What are you cooking? And it's like, all I'm cooking are onions. You know, so like, beef, beef has us smell, but really, like, when you smell good food, you're normally smelling onions or garlic. And we're going to keep moving that around so it doesn't stick, doesn't burn. That's doing pretty good. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to get these guys. Start tossing them in. It's going to get a little sizzle going. Make sure I didn't miss any. I did. I missed one, of course. Nope, oh, two. There we go. There you go. I'm going to give my gravy a shake one more time, and I'm going to check the bottom. Oh, see? Shake it. If you shake it upside down, making funny faces as I shake, I get more of that cornstarch incorporated. And here we go. Chicken going in. Please 
sleeves going in. And now we're just doing it until these leaves are cooked. So I'm going to actually turn down the heat, maybe even off the heat, and flip it to low. The leaves will cook pretty quickly. Since that's on low, I'm going to grab a plate. there on the bottom. So I'm going to get just a small drop of water to get some of that bottom sauce released. Might not have had enough oil in there. That's just a tiny drop of water, but it's enough to loosen up all that gravy on the bottom. Just a good amount of it. I might actually need more. So at this point, it's kind of like deglazing a pan. Okay, I thought I put six in, and I really only put uh, I really only put four in. Now I'm up to about a tablespoon of water, so maybe I did only put four in. There we go. That is what we like. stuff off the bottom. Put this up to high for one more second. That looks perfect. Okay. These guys out. Dump this out onto our plates. Smells delicious. You can see um, you can see on the bottom there where I had some that this piece right here. That's where I had to throw the water back in because it stuck to it. That's okay. You know, half of cooking is just adapting as you go. And here we have it: Chinese chicken and brown gravy with bok choy. Let's take a look. There we are. So for those who uh, joined me, thank you. For those who watched this on recording, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll do this again uh, sometime this summer. Uh, have a great night. I'm going to go eat. Love you. Bye.